Okay, so David Davis is going to come up. For those of you who are from Florida, he needs no introduction. He is a design specialist. He works with uh, Florida Consortium um, and Learning and Connections. I always get that messed up, David. That's Apologies. Okay. Come on up. Okay. He's going to talk to us about design and UDL. Thanks, David. Thank you. Waiting for the slide. Okay. Um, so I work with the Problem Solving and Response to Intervention Project, part of Florida's Multi-Tiered Systems of Supports. So I've already rattled off two things that people are always, when you hear them, they're like, what are those and, and where do they fit in? And you hear things like UDL, Universe Design for Learning, Differentiated Instruction, Personalization, Personalized Learning, Academic Choice, and sometimes we wonder how things fit together. For me, it's really important to have something in my head, some type of a design, a plan, a blueprint, or a mental model that helps things come together. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Now, design is almost inherently personal. Everybody seems to have a different sense of design, and that's great. That's fine. It's taken into consideration in many things. For example, if you're doing a word cloud, you can pick different fonts. You can pick different colors. You can get rid of your colors. You can go with a black and white feel. Or if you're feeling extra fancy, you can just decide to add some cutesy pictures. And it doesn't even have to mean anything. It can just be because you like little monsters. <laughs> that could be the only reason, but that's fine because it's your sense of design. So I'm not trying to, the things that I share with you is not so that you will have the same model or have the same blueprint but it's hopefully to help encourage you to think about your own model and to think about your own sense of design and blueprint when it comes to education, learning, universal design, and other things. So since this is personal, let me tell you a little bit about myself. First off, I am a huge fan of the mouse. I was born in California, so when I was little, we went to Disneyland a lot. And then once I moved to Florida as an adult, I took my daughter to Disney World a lot, and I love it. And with respect to the Harry Potter universe, I have to say that I prefer the magic of Disney. Because Disney magic is for us non-magical people. Disney magic is the magic of curiosity and creativity, of imagination and hope. The engineers at Disney are not engineers, they're Imagineers, and they do Imagineering. So there's a whole way of thinking with Disney that I really like. Now, something else about myself, I like hospitals. Now, a lot of people are not comfortable in hospitals, and that's fine, but I'm actually, for some reason, very, very comfortable in hospitals. And I have spent a lot of time in hospitals, visiting friends and family, spending nights in hospitals, Three in the morning, I'm fine wandering the halls just seeing what's out there. I, I'm comfortable with hospitals. And I know right now exactly what you're all thinking. You're asking, David, where is your favorite hospital? <laughs> all right. Well, since you've asked, let me just tell you that if you get hurt on a Disney property <laughs> or you need to go to a hospital, there is a Disney hospital they will take you to. There is a town nearby called the Town of Celebration. It's a planned community, and in Celebration, there is a hospital, and that hospital is called Celebration Health. Now, think about that name for a minute. It's not Celebration Get Better. It's not Celebration Hope You Get to Feeling Well Soon. It's Celebration Health, and their whole focus in design is the health of everyone that lives in Celebration and all the surrounding counties. And it's a really interesting hospital because they have a lot of services that you don't normally find at a hospital. If you go to their webpage, on the first page you may find a recipe for something nutritious. They have nutrition classes, they have spas, they have gyms, they have exercise classes. They have all kinds of counseling. They have addiction counseling, they have pastoral counseling. They have a lot of services just designed for health. So I'm going to talk about Celebration Health for just a minute and how the things that I see when I look at Celebration Health. I want to start with healthy citizens who can maintain and monitor their own health. 
all of the people that live in celebration, all the people that live in the surrounding counties, that they're healthy and that they can maintain and monitor their own health. So to do that, they've got all of these services designed for health, and then they've got all their general medical services, their emergency medical services, they have specialized medical services, they have intensive care services. So they have this multi-tiered system of supports that they have their services set in that are aligned and that are all working together for the health of everybody in this area. Now they didn't just say, let's create some medical services and let's get some doctors in. They had this huge body of knowledge on health, on physical health, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, and they looked at all of it. And so what they did is they took that knowledge and they planned for the systemic variability that they knew they would find in everybody living in this area. And this was really important because say they only had one type of antibiotic, that the only thing they had was penicillin, and someone came in that needed an antibiotic, but they were allergic to penicillin. Suddenly you have somebody that may end up needing more intensive medical services because of the response to the intervention, but the problem was that the intervention wasn't correct. They didn't take into account that variability. So they take this body of knowledge and they use it for everything. They use it to design what equipment they need to have, to look at what medicines they need to have, to look at the architecture of the building and how it's laid out, and to look at what skills the staff need to have that they hire. Now what brings this system to life is the staff. They have an incredibly responsive staff who are able to differentiate the services both within the tiers and between the tiers. And another skill that these staff have is that they're incredible problem solvers. If you've ever watched a TV show like House or another medical show, one of the main plot points in those shows, the point of drama, is that there are problems that need to be solved. And you watch people going through this process where they're solving these problems. And so they're doing a lot of problem solving. and this knowledge that they're getting as they're implementing all of these services, they then take and add to that body of knowledge that helps to design to begin with. And so now you have practice informing practice. And what you have within the system is embedded continuous improvement so that the system is always checking itself and the people are always making decisions based on good data and improving the system. So when I look at education, for all people, I look at taking that body of knowledge, that universe design for learning, and using that information to design a system that works for every student. Because you have the information in there to help to predict the variability that you're going to have. And within a conference like this, you're going to hear a lot of different things from people within UDL that all comes together to help look at this. And this is all important. Let's say that you took a piece out of the model on, with Celebration Health. Let's say we took out problem solving. And you had a hospital that was great on problem solving, you had a hospital that wasn't great on problem solving, but they had a lot of good strategies because they'd been to some workshops. Where would you want to go? To the people who could problem solve or the people that had some good strategies? Or let's say they took out their data collection system. You have one hospital that has great just-in-time data and the other hospital that says, let me take your blood pressure and we'll get the results back in a couple of weeks. Where would you want to go? Or let's say you took out the knowledge on systemic variability. And so you designed all of the services for the average person. And now somebody comes in that needs something different and you say, well, you know, we weren't designed for you, but we've got some doctors with some specialized knowledge and we'll get them together and we'll figure out some accommodations so that you can access some of our services. They didn't do that. We can't do that either. We have to design for everybody. So what you're going to have in this summit is you're going to find people with a lot of different lenses. We've heard some amazing lenses already this morning. You're going to hear some in your sessions. You're going to hear some from each other. And they're going to be different lenses. You may hear somebody talking about a lens where they're really focused on accessible educational materials, on response to intervention, 
on variability, on lesson plannings, on writing goals appropriately. They could be focused on assessments. They could be focused on curriculum. Just think about curriculum for a minute. You can focus all the way down to looking at something like pacing schedules. Do you want, say for example, fourth grade math standards? Do you want to do a linear pacing schedule? You're gonna do your standards here, here, then here, then here, then here. Do you want to do a linear schedule with personalization so that your students can be at different places? Do you want to do a spiral pacing schedule? So you address all of the standards to begin with at a very simple level and then address them again with increasing levels of complexity. And do you want personalization within that spiral? People are gonna have different things they're focused on. So when you're talking to each other, you're gonna find different lenses. And that's a good thing. That's what brings the richness of this summit. So I really want to encourage you to network and talk to each other and hear what each other's saying so that you can start to build your own sense of design. But I would like to offer the possibility of a lens that we can all share in talking. There's a book called The Art of Game Design, a book of lenses by Jesse Shell, who used to work with Disney. So I like his work. Um, but Jesse has a book with 112 different lenses for game designers. And that's a lot of lenses. That's a lot of things to think about. But he has a sort of a beginning lens that he starts with. And that's called the lens of the experience. Figure out what experience you want your players to have and then design the game so they have that experience. Now education is a major life experience for every one of our kids. And it is a major life experience that we design. It is not something that's just out there. It's designed by people. It's designed by educators. It's designed by people at the federal level, the state level, the district level, the local site level. And we look at this experience that our students are having. We make a lot of decisions on it, a lot of important decisions sometimes, on how they're responding to this experience that we designed. And we tell them, you know what you're experiencing? You should want to experience this your entire life. We call that lifelong learning. And we have a lot of students that when they hear that, they say, <laughs> never going to happen. I just want out. I just want out. Because I don't like this experience. And I think we can do better. What if we made the decision to start with the lens of the experience and decide that we wanted to make sure that this major life experience for all of our kids was a celebration? What if when we were starting to design lesson plans and instruction in math and science and reading, algebra, biology, and literature, we decided to start off by asking ourselves, how do I design this instruction and these experiences so that my students experience curiosity and creativity, that they experience imagination and hope? Disneyland opened in 1955 using the technologies and resources of the 1950s, and it's been a place of wonder and amazement for me from the beginning. It's not about our technologies. We use the technologies and resources of our day in any age. What it is about is our sense of design, our blueprint, our ideas, our way of thinking behind it. So I want to encourage you to think about your own sense of design. I want to encourage you to talk with each other and to share with each other, to really listen in what everybody's saying. And then when you go home, I want you to try to design a learning experience that your students will want to have for the rest of their lives. Because that would be magical. Thank you.